Hey there, today I'm going to share with you my experience with the November Soap Challenge. The Soap Challenge is hosted by Amy Wharton and this splash swirl technique that I am showing you here today was brought to us by Chris of Thai Herbal Soaps. I will leave some links for Amy and Chris in the description below. My name is Terry with Tree Marie Soapworks and let's get started. For today's video, I'm starting with my batch already in progress. I already have all of the ingredients together except for the color. I did add the fragrance to the oils ahead of time. It's a very well-behaved fragrance, so I can do that. It's also a very strong fragrance. The fragrance I used was from Wholesale Supplies Plus, and it is called Cherry Almond. For this batch, I'm using my 8-inch tall and skinny mold, and it also has the frame around it that my husband made so it doesn't bow out in the middle on the sides. For my swirl tool, I'm just using a homemade tool. You can make one too. First, I cut a drinking straw to the length of the mold, and then I I slid my wire through there and I bent it around it and also I offset the edges as you can see. That helps me with two things. that helps me to see a little better because my hands aren't in the way and it also helps me see more of a spatial relationship with how deep the mold is. For certain designs it helps me to see how deep I want to plunge my swirl tool down into the mold. If you're wondering what kind of oils I use for this recipe, I use a combination of olive oil, coconut oil, lard, cocoa butter, and castor oil. When I figure out my proportions of the oils, I like there to be about 43% saturated fats and 57% unsaturated. That makes for a really nice balance. It makes for a hard bar, but it also gives me time to work. It doesn't set up as quickly as some batches that have a higher amount of saturated fats. I usually use Use this ratio when I'm making batches that need to stay fluid longer. But when I'm making recipes that don't need to stay fluid, I will up that number for the saturated fats to make it closer to 50-50. I talk about this a little more in other videos, so if you're interested, check out some of my other videos. I always give little tidbits of what I learned along the way, so you may learn something too. Really quickly here, I want to show you that an emulsion hasn't been reached yet. You can see that it's very grainy and what you're looking for is a nice even film over the whole thing, no graininess. This has to be stick blended a little longer, but very carefully. While I'm getting my first batch to an emulsion, let's talk about what a splash swirl is and what specifically Amy is looking for for this soap challenge. The splash swirl is a type of hanger swirl and what we are trying to create is as many long wispy vertical swirls as possible and we want them to cover at least 50% of the soap face. For this first design, I decided to use 33% of the batter as the light color or the white color, and the rest of the batter, the 67%, would be the brown batter. As I said before, I'm using cherry almond fragrance. As many of you probably know that that goes to a beautiful, rich, dark brown color. And so I need to use a white colorant to bring that to a lighter brown or almost white color. So for that 33%, I'm using titanium dioxide, and I'm using it at a rate of 1 teaspoon spoon per pound of oils. Now for that remaining batter, because that fragrance causes the brown discoloration, it doesn't happen immediately. So I am using a little brown colorant just so I can see what I'm doing when I'm making the design. I'm only using a half a teaspoon per pound of oils of brown mica. Next I divide half of that brown batter, so that would be a third of the whole main batch, and that will go into the mold first. I'm pouring this batter at what I would say is between a light and medium trace. It needs to be thin enough that it's pourable, but thick enough that it's not watery. My design idea for this one is to make three stripes of white. So I'm pouring roughly a third of the white at a time and then using a little bit of the brown in between just to set it off a little bit. Now that the batter's in the mold, I go ahead and make several plunges up and down the same path. 
I already happen to have some lines on my mold which are about a fourth of an inch apart. So I plunged those up and down and then I went back and plunged in between those lines. So I think I had a total of 17 plunges for this first batch. As I cut and bevel each of these batches, I'm going to let you know what I learned along the way and how I'm changing it for the next batch. And also I'll set a little bit of it to music, so there'll be a mix of music and talking, so stay tuned or you might miss something. Here we have the cut. It's 48 hours later and I'm liking what I see. I really do like the bar, but there's definitely room for improvement and I don't really think this is what the splash swirl is supposed to look like. For one thing, I think I got too much white and so I'm going to lower that for the next batch. And also I'm not liking it that the swirls didn't reach the bottom. When you use your swirl tool to go to the bottom and then you pull it back up that same path, it kind of pulls the swirl back up. So I need to work that into the design. Another thing to note here is that since this is a discoloring fragrance, that brown is not as brown as it's going to get. Look at these bars one day later. They have a beautiful rich color and the contrast between the white and the brown really pops. To make this look more like the splash swirl, I believe some of that white would need to be broken up more, so I would need to make more swirls. Also, I'm changing up the design a bit and I'll tell you about that when I start the next batch. For batch number two, I'm doing everything the same as far as the recipe and the fragrance. And I'm just splitting this one off a little differently to get less of the white color. So I'm using 20% instead of 33%. For the design of this one, I decided to do a diagonal pattern. So with that white stripe in the middle, I will pour half of the brown, all of the white, and then all of the remaining brown. And then do my swirl pattern and hopefully get a little more wispy with it. To make my diagonal, I have my mold propped up in a frame of another mold and I elevated it a bit so that I can go back and forth with ease and not have to worry about hitting the table. So I pour half the brown and then I pour all the white. I'm trying not to break through when I'm making that diagonal, but it really probably doesn't matter because I'm going to be swirling it later, but I'm trying to keep it in that diagonal line form for now. Then when I pour the remaining brown again, I'm trying not to break through. All right, now it's time to use the hanger tool. Again, for this one, I went down and up the same track. I did a total of 29 plunges. All right, let's take a look at the cut. What do you think? I think it does look more like what a splash swirl is supposed to be. We got some really wispy swirls there, but actually I think I could have even done more swirls. It's weird when you're doing the swirls, you're thinking you're mixing it to oblivion. You're thinking that it's just gonna be a muddled mess when you cut it. So you have to go against your better judgment and just keep swirling. 
I do believe that I could have got the white broken up a bit more, but it's really hard to tell where you've been. So hopefully I'll figure that out in the next few batches. But I do think that that really thin, white, wispy swirl is such a pleasing swirl, isn't it? And the contrast between a dark and light color is so nice and simple, but really beautiful and elegant. But for the next batch, I'm going to get into some colors. So stay tuned for the third batch. Here we have batch number three and these colors I used for the remaining two batches following this one and also I did the same or similar proportions. The dark color of batter you see there is really a dark brown and I use 40% of the batter for that. For the purple and yellow I use 15% of the batter and for the remaining green, blue, and orange I use 10% of the batter. For my design strategy here, I decided to try to get a little more interest in the bar, make it look a little less flat and have a little more depth to it. So you can do that with color and darks tend to recede, lights tend to pop a little. My first round of pouring, I used the dark brown with the purple and blue, and then I added a little bit of orange. And then to kind of push that all over a bit, I added some orange and purple and yellow on the far end. And then I swirled. My swirls didn't come up and down the same path, they were more random. Then I did a second phase to the design with some more of the brighter colors and then did some more swirls. It's hard to see here with it sped up, but I did some wiggly swirls and topped it off with the remaining dark, it would be the brown with the purple and blue. And then I did some swirls in that as well. Okay, let's talk about how this came out. I am very happy with it, but I don't think it's a splash swirl at all. It looks very marbly. It's definitely a hanger swirl, but I don't think it looks like a splash swirl. So I just loved it though. I think design wise it works. And so for the next one, I got a little off subject. I love how the top came out on this one. I was mainly focused on the pointy layers that happened in the top. And so I wanted to repeat that because the swirls only had to cover just over 50%. So I wanted to do the top design again for the next one. And that was kind of my getting a little off subject because my favorite part of this one and the next one were just the top which mainly focused on the pointy layers and not the splash swirl at all so this is my little rabbit hole. 
Really, here is the only place you can see my wiggly line when I did the swirl. It didn't translate at all throughout the batch. I think if you want to do wiggly lines, you really have to exaggerate them because when I moved my swirl tool back and forth, it was only a difference of about a fourth of an inch. So it averaged those and made that pretty much a straight line. It was like for every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction and it just took an average of those movements and nothing really happened. Here we are with batch number four and as I said again I was a little off subject here because I was mainly focused on the top but I did have a plan for the bottom. It was to do first an in the pot swirl somewhat similar to the previous design. So I was supposed to put black in the pot and then do a little purple and blue in the pot and swirl it and pour it. And I didn't do that. I just poured the black in. You see I fixed it by just pouring some blue and purple in. Next I was going to do an in the pot swirl in rainbow order. And so I started with yellow instead of orange and that didn't go as planned either. My idea for the swirls was to pour a line and then swirl that line and somewhat break it in half, then pour some more and do the same thing. You will see the results. I'm not thrilled with how they came out. As I was focused on the top, that's part that I liked the best. And for this challenge, it's supposed to be focused on the actual splash swirl. So that was supposed to be the main thing and anything else was supposed to be secondary to that design. And whatever you want to call it, shiny object syndrome or rabbit hole or squirrel. I kind of just went after a part of the design that I really loved. It was just off subject. So let's get back on subject for the next one. If you're not familiar with some of the techniques that I've mentioned, like in the pot swirl, one pot wonder, or the pointy layers technique, I do have other videos that feature those techniques and I explain them a little more in depth. Here I'm doing the pointy layers technique and it really just involves peaks and valleys and putting a dent in that surface but not breaking through and then covering it gradually. And it makes little waves and points and it's very fun and very easy. You just have to kind of wrap your mind around it first but it's easier than it looks. So take a look at those videos if you're interested.
Okay, let's take a look at how this batch came out. I do really like it, but my eye is really drawn to that upper part, that part that looks kind of like a landscape. The rest is okay. I do like the swirls. They're really long swirls, but I think it's not really the splash swirl technique. I really do think you have to go up and down for that technique and not do curvy swirls because I think curvy swirls tend to just look like a hanger swirl. They don't look like the splash technique. With this one, I think the swirl came out a bit muddled as well. I think that had to do with me doing the one pot wonder. It's already a thin stripe of color and then you go and swirl it and it just mixes. So although there's some nice little parts of color, I think most of all it's muddled. As you look at my other two batches with these same colors, they show a lot more color where this one doesn't really show the color because it's mixed together in kind of a gray tone. Here we have the fifth and final batch and what's involved here is just putting in all of the dark brown and that's 40% and then the remaining colors I just did 12% so each of those are the same. I just layered them on top of each other. I wasn't too careful about it because I knew I would be swirling and it doesn't really matter for that. I just layered them in in accordance with the rainbow orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. For this one, I decided that I needed to be able to see the progress of my swirls. So my idea was to not put it in the wooden frame like I normally do. And I kind of got down to eye level when I was making the swirls. I could see that left side. I could tell where I was swirling. I drug the swirl tool on that one end. And it was very much easier to tell where I needed to add swirls and what I needed to do to balance my design. For this one, I believe I swirled 27 or 28 times. This is very similar to the amount of swirls I did on the second design.
right, let's look at the cut. I really love how this came out. I love it that the brown was really pulled up to the top. The colors in the somewhat background are very ethereal and they just really glow. They look like fire or I thought at a sunset at dusk or dawn through the trees, they just look like a blaze of light and it worked wonderfully with that dark contrast. I was just about to finish editing this video and I got some news. I found out that I won the grand prize for this splash world technique and it was this very soap that I entered. So I am so excited and I do appreciate you sticking with me to the end of the video and I appreciate your comments and I hope to get you videos more regularly. So if you're new and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified when I post my next video. So thank you so much and have a wonderful day.